indigenous people and ceremonies and really get to, you know, experience that direct firsthand knowledge. And uh, so it's a big honor for sure to be uh, sharing some of this with you today. These are some of my mentors and teachers. Uh, we have uh, Grandmother McNally up there on the right in front of the ayahuasca line. <laughs> the grandmother, looks like she's got a little couple of tabs on her shoulder there. Uh, uh, she's, she introduced me to, to my uh, direct connection and experience with nature, and so I really uh, have my love for my grandmother. Uh, my man Ras Nayeng down here in the bottom corner, uh, he was an inspiration and teacher for the Crystal Synergy Ox, the Cosmic Keys that you see in the hands there, and of course, you know, some of you are familiar with those tools. If not, come see me. Um, and I'll build you one. <laughs> and um, Brother Ross been there. He's also a big inspirator to me. And uh, he's an author, a uh, astrologer, and um, he really honed my awareness of the Crystal Kingdom. So check Ross Ben out. His uh, publications, Rocks of Ages. He's got uh, some books on the Dogons and urban geomancy and things. Uh, my daughter down here, Josiah Rain. <laughs> um, I remember one day she had this this shirt on. She said, "I love Ireland," and I was like, "Where did you get that shirt?" Um, but you know, I started realizing my my daughter was really into Ireland, and my grandmother. We, we got the I'm from the McNelly line. That's that's my family name, McNelly. My mom, my mom's side. Um, and then, you know, we've got um, over on this side, we've got my brother, Bob bon bon Benjamin, from uh, Midnight Akibeka, Virgin Islands Radio Band. Had the opportunity to meet him over in St. Croix on the beach. And um, Vaughn, you know, I was re really uh, inspired by the Rastafari culture. And I wanted to have some direct experiences and not just read out of books. So I did a lot of traveling in the uh, Caribbean islands and connecting with, with the rest of our people and um, and I went over and asked Vaughn, you know, I was like I want to, uh, like I really want to learn more about your culture and your people and you know, he said well, what about your people? Tell me about your people, you know <laughs> and I was like what? <laughs> okay so he gave me some homework, you know and um, I really um, also got a lot of big inspirations from the, these other uh, people on the left here, um, my, my friend Michael James, uh, my colleagist, and a um, big inspirator for the cultivation of mushrooms for me. Uh, Darren LeBaron over here, you know, he uh, is a part of a mentorship course, and he's just a really phenomenal educator, and, you know, I heard... Uh, So yeah, Darren was a really big inspirator for these presentations um, because I heard people like himself and people like Baba Kalindi speaking about their ancient, you know, ancestral connection to these uh, plant teachers, these, these technologies. And um, it made me very curious, you know, about what my connection was and where this where my culture had these these connections and um, if you really you know look into this you're gonna find that the whole globe of pre-colonization that no matter where you were in the globe we had a connection with the earth with the elements with the plants with, with mother nature and so um, regardless of you know what tribe you come from or what color skin you are you have this connection that's what we all have is this connection to the elements to the earth right and so um it got me really interested in exploring what my connection was and where my family came from and how we worked with the technology the mushrooms you know so 
giving thanks for the uh, the ayahuasca, the cannabis, the psilocybin, we got the tobacco plant, the peyote, the combo. We've all visited all of these things throughout this day, and I'm super grateful for these as my teachers and mentors. And uh, just wanted to take a moment real quick to, to say a word about Hati Kalani Ii because he was, um, a, you know, the biggest inspiration for me to be here with you all today and be speaking. And, um, you know, one of his things was about go out and do the work, you know. Now it's, it's in, in our hands, you know, we all get to go out and walk away from this, this experience and take something tangible with us to go out and take into the world and share, you know, even in this community. And so um, that's, that's what he inspired me to do. And he inspired me to look into my ancestral lineages and, and our connection. So let's get it on. Thanks, Baba Kalindi. Ashe. Okay, so um, so my big why. The next the next slide you're gonna see is my why, and that's um, uh, the why I'm here is, is for my family, for my daughter, for my ancestors, and uh, my mother. You know, they're uh, really important for me, and uh, I want to leave a legacy and a, a remembrance for for my future and for my daughter. So this is a part of this this legacy building and it's just remembering who we are, remembering you know our ancestral connection. Yep. So here we go, Josiah Rain. And Sorry, this works right now. Okay. okay. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, inspired to research you know my Irish lineage um, through my daughter and my mother. So here we go. We're the Celtic people. The Tuatha de Danann. They were um, translated as the tribe of Danu. Scholars agree that Danu was the name of their goddess, most probably Anu. And we know that word, Anu. We're already going to start seeing this etymological connection here, but we've all heard this word Anu. Uh, the Tuatha de Danann were a supernatural race that resided in the other world, but they were able to interact with those living in the real world, right? They were in the multi-dimensional realms. But Tuatha, Tuatha de Danann, right? The Tua, <laughs> if anybody knows about the Tua people, right? They're the small pygmy. People in the air talks about it, and you know, Brother Moodoo. Moodoo is another one of my big inspirators, y'all. Give it up for Moodoo, yo, yo. <laughs> Moodoo, man. I didn't have your picture because I knew you were going to be here in person, you know, we could just look right at you. <laughs> your, your, your presentation was amazing. I wish you had more time, man. Yeah, good. Thanks, bro. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So, the Twa people, the Twa de Denon, right? Um, more than one scholars suggest that ancient Ireland was home to magic mushroom religion. American author Peter Wilson wrote a book called Plowing the Clouds, saying it makes perfect sense that the Indo Europeans used psychedelic drugs in their rituals. In fact, these psychedelic experiences could be the origin of the pagan religions that sprung up all over Ireland. And Wilson has studied that no one, or he's stunned that no one has connected psychedelics to Ireland because there's plenty of scope for a cult of mushrooms amongst the Celts, the old fashioned Indo Europeans, okay? So the cult of the mushrooms. Uh, <laughs> the best connection. So, um, the, the Mag Turin, a mystical plain in Ireland, which was the scene of uh, two important battles. 
The first one was between the furball. So the furball, if you if you do some more research on the furball, that was actually another name for the twa that was a, a later adaptation of the name of the twa tribe. But um, they were the race of gods, the twa to the dan. So in this battle, the Firbolg uh, won Ireland for themselves, but Nawada, the king of the gods, lost his hand in the battle. This is going to be important. We're going to see um, Nawada later on. Um, because of this fly, he's no longer permitted to be king. Bress, we see Bress here. What sounds like Bess? We're going to have the best time. The beautiful son and goddess of the four more kings. The four moors. FOMO. <laughs> Fear are missing out, right? But there had to be at least four moors over there. So, you know, you talked about, we talked about this Afrocentric study. It's all, it all leads back to Africa, you know? And so we're gonna we're gonna visit that a little bit more here. You ever you know about the the the, the kilt? You know the Scottish Scottish Irish the kilt. You ever heard of the Kente tribe in Northern Africa? Okay. Flyer Garrick. I'm not gonna get into this. We all know the most famous mushroom. It's the the emoji, the mushroom emoji, <laughs> right? The Flyer Garrick, the Amanita muscaria. So this was one of the main um, uh, mushrooms. It's got muscomol, it's not in the psilocybin family. Um, and there's a whole connection with the, the Druid people working with this particular mushroom that we know as uh, Amnita muscaria. They also work with the psilocybin uh, strain called the Liberty Cap. And um, it's, it, it says it grows right, you know, basically in in Dublin, <laughs> right downtown. And um, throughout history, they were taken by regular people, it says, the psychedelic trip is milder than the Flyer of Garrick. Um, so the Flyer of Garrick has a totally different, almost like disassociative experience that where, you, where we talk about seeing ourselves, you know, Brother Nighthawk mentioned, seeing yourself outside of yourself, this is what the flyer Garrett can do for you. But Liberty Caps, another strain of the mushrooms that, um, okay, go ahead, thank you. Um, gods and goddesses, you know, we talked about when we look at psychedelics, we look at the gods and goddesses. So let's think to get a little bit better idea of our connection with the psilocybin and the Amadeus, we need to look at the gods and goddesses. Okay, go ahead. Goddess Bridget, or Bridget. She's one of the mo most important goddesses in the Irish lore. Uh, she's the daughter of Dagda, the wife of Bress. Um, she's patron saint of the Smithcrafts, healing, and poetry. Her name means the high one. Come on, the high <laughs> one. <laughs> The proto-Celtic bright exalted one. Um, it's also from the Sanskrit Bhati. It's thought to refer to her association to the fire and the sun. When she was born at sunrise, a tower of flames is said to have extended from the top of her head to the heavens. A fire in the head. That's what they talked about when they went in, went in on the technologies. The fire in the head. Next slide. So um, this is a little bit of more of the origin and, and history of the, the Celtic language and the, and the, um, the Irish people. But um, it had a mythology that leads us to Mount Brandon in Ireland, and it's the westernmost point of European continent. Mount Brandon is, is located in Tyr Nanag, Irish place of forever young. Forever young, that's a reference to immortality. The immortality code, the, the mushroom, right? So we go on to find out that Goddess Brigid basically, she's here under a tree. She embraces the birch tree. We know that that's the tree that 
Amanita grows under the birch tree. She has a red and white dress, right? It's a symbolic relationship with the goddess Brigitte and the Amanita Muscarius, describing it without use from the scientific frame. She's using mythology and more to describe this connection with, with the Amanita. So, according to mythology, oh, that's okay. It's okay. You can go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I think we gotta get to I got like So we find a goddess with a red red dress living in a sacred grove of birch trees. Um, she's a, she confers a healing and immortality and she teaches a language called Om. <laughs> the Om language, right? And you know, we're all familiar with that of course, but the the, the actual um, language of the Celts, where they they would have these things called om stones, and this is what they writ, wrote their languages on, They're known as the om stones. So um, she's located in the miraculous star mirror. I've been there before the star mirror. Um, this is just basically saying that we know that this relationship exists between um, the Amanita muscaria and the birch tree and the goddess Brigitte, right? Okay. Soma, um, Soma was recognized by um, Gordon P. Wasson, right? He's the one that kind of, of course, brought the knowledge of psilocybin to the Western culture. He wrote a book about this Soma, how Amanita Muscaria was, um, you know, what they use in the original Soma roots that come from the, the, Hin the Hindu and Vedic teachings. So here we see some of the goddesses. What do they have on? A red and white dress, huh? Looks familiar. So as, as spread out, and connected as the Amanita Muscaria are, they're in every culture. We see it in Mongolia, we see it in India, we see it in Ireland, we see it in Africa. It's everywhere. This is a little comic relief slide here for you. <laughs> it's meant for a laugh. Um, these are just some funny pictures I found of the Pope because. Uh, <laughs> Because, yeah, you know, the Pope is a mushroom too, right? <laughs> um, so the Catholic tra transformed goddess Brigitte into St. Bridget, and then they fabric fabricated the entire history of St. Bridget, and then they even had her die. She's the goddess of immortality. <laughs> kind of had to flip the script there a little bit. So Nunos, um, he was one of the most impressive gods of the Celts. You can see here with the stag horns. He's a horny, he's a horny guy. We'll, we'll let um, Lucia tell you more about that in a workshop tomorrow. Uh, no, it's okay. Um, so Sir Nunos, he's depicted with a bag of coins or grain. Who's a, my, who, who's a mycologist in here? Who grows mushrooms, anybody? Okay. Got a couple in here. Bag of grain. What do you do with a bag of grain? You grow mushrooms. And then what do you get from the bag of grain? Coins. <laughs> so uh, he's the horned one. Um, and he's associated with the forest and animals and fertility, right? Okay. So here I found a depiction of Sir Nunos. And, you know, just going on this, like, looking at the, the ancient artifacts in history, you can see right in this forehead here, the mushroom, I mean, it's, you know, I, I might have to point it out, but it's pretty obvious to me. Looks like a mushroom head, horny guy. He's got these torques here, too. They're ne necklaces, copper necklace thing that they wore. I found a couple that actually looked like mushrooms in my research. Um, so yeah, we can go on. The horn god. 
we know the horn god, the, the horn gods and goddesses were um, revered and worshipped because of their connection with the association with mushroom. They produce the dung where the mushrooms grow. Daga is the All Father. Um, he is the most important in Irish mythology, um, and basically, he controlled life and death. And he has this um, cauldron. This is one of his uh, main symbols: was the harp and the cauldron. And you know, when you go into that higher elevated experience, and it's like the harp starts playing, right? It's this a high frequency. And then the cauldron is where, you know, I mean, what do you do with cauldrons? You brew, brew teas and things like that. Mushroom teas. <laughs> okay, we're squeezing. Yeah, I just wanted to show a little bit more around some of these cauldrons. These are actual cauldrons, pictures and images. Yeah, you saw it. You did it right there. Peran saw right? Right there. He's got the mushroom head. Every one of these. Every one of these has the mushroom head. These are all on the cauldrons of Dagda. This is like, can't make this stuff up. This is the guy from earlier, um, Nawada. The one-armed guy that got his arm chopped off in the battle. Check him out with the mushroom head. Again, even it's even got the dots on it. Yeah, these guys, these are all the these are the gods and goddesses of Ireland in the Celtic mythology. So we're seeing a pattern here? That's okay, go ahead. Um, you can go ahead and skip. This is another horned goddess. Wanted to talk about the, um, and you can go, keep going, because we don't have time. The mushrooms and the fairies, you've got fairy rings. Uh, they say that you go away with the fairies in Ireland. When you take mushrooms, you're away with the fairies. So the fairies, they also call the fairies pookies. So pookies is another nickname for mushrooms in Ireland. Okay, gnomes. You always see gnomes around the Amanitas, <laughs> right? The, it, I mean, it just doesn't get more obvious. It's not even that hard to figure it out. Uh, the gnomes were, yes, the mushroom elves. You know, you see these mushrooms, I mean, you see the, the machine elves, anyways, across all different, you know, cultures as well. Don't have time to get into that. Best the gnome. Um, this is the, the connection to the little green man. Um, and this is a depiction of him running through the forest. So there's some connections here between the gods and goddesses, but I don't have time to get into that. I only have a few more minutes. But you have a workshop tomorrow. I do. Okay. <laughs> so yes, I do have a workshop. <laughs> I've got so much. There is no time, y'all. Time doesn't exist, actually. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is, because we're out of time, we're going to take just a few questions, maybe two, three questions, and then I'm going to pass the mic because we have, we have a very tight schedule and we have to get out of here at five. So I'm going to go ahead and um, wrap up my presentation there. If you want to learn more, I did it.